Well, good morning. I hope that you have enjoyed taking the month of November to count your blessings. And I was just thinking about, as we were singing that song um, that time, how, how it slows down in the, in the chorus, count your, count your blessings. And I just think that that's just such a, a great reminder for us as we go through, go through life. And when we take time to count our blessings, it, it, it allows those things that are, that are just sweet in our lives to grow a little more sweeter. It slows down our, our minds is, as we live in a world that's moving in a thousand directions all at the same moment. It, it gives, us, gives us a focus in the middle of all that we're facing in life. So I hope that these times that we've uh, been, been taking this month to, to count our blessings have been a blessing to you um, to, to take time to focus on gratitude. And so we want to focus on our gratitude prompt for today as we begin worship. I want to take time for you to think for yourself. We have been uh, talking about spiritual gifts during our Sunday school period and um, just invite those that have been in there. But if you haven't been in there in Sunday school to, to learn about your spiritual gifts, uh, you realize that God has given you gifts as well. Every single person here has been given gifts by God. And so we want to, to focus not just on what other people have done, but who God has created us to be today. So with that, we want you to take your leaves. Uh, Mary will be in the back to collect these at the end and add them up to our, our tree of gratitude here in the front. And I would encourage you before you leave today to uh, maybe come up here to the front and, and look at some of these things people are grateful for. You might see your name up on the list. Uh, there, there are several names that are up there. So we invite you to come and, and be a part of that. So um, today's gratitude prompt. I want to ta just challenge you at some point during the worship service to, to write down about this prompt for you to, to grow in gratitude. Gratitude is not just about what others have done, but who God created us to be, even down to where we live. Name three skills, talents, or gifts God has given you and consider ways that you can use these to honor God this week. So I just want to invite you not just to take and write them down, but uh, to put them in action this week, to, to make almost an action plan of how you can be a blessing by, based on the, the gifts that God has given you. So uh, take that leaf and, and be faithful with it and just use it as an opportunity to draw closer to God and his heart for you. As we, can, as we begin worship, I want to focus on a few announcements that I have. Uh, first, I uh, just want to draw your attention. Tuesday evening, the Ministry and Council is hosting a Thanksgiving service. Uh, we're going to have a meal and a time of worship down in the fellowship hall. We invite all of our church family to come and be a part of that. Uh, so Tuesday night, 630, mark your calendars, join us. If uh, you've enjoyed uh, being the, the blessing and focusing on gratitude, we hope that that will be a blessing to you as well. And then as far as other announcements, there will be uh, a wedding shower coming after worship today, 2.30 to 4 o'clock for uh, Cassidy and Patrick Lawrence. We uh, look forward to being able to celebrate and honor the two of you and your marriage. Uh, so realize that that's going on this afternoon down in the fellowship hall. And then uh, I had a note that the nominating committee will meet uh, immediately after worship in the front of the sanctuary. So the nominating committee come down after worship to, for that time. Are there other announcements we need to mention today? Praise God. 167 children that will have the opportunity to meet Jesus or to, and to learn about him. What a blessing that is. We praise God for that. That's awesome. 1,200 shoe boxes at Love's Creek. Thank you for taking care of that and heading it up. Well, if there are no other announcements this morning, we want to take some time uh, this morning to go into a, a period of prayer concerns and praises and just to share some of the ones that were mentioned during our Sunday school period. 
Uh, we want to remember Buddy Michaels, uh, which is Lee's co-worker, and his family as they have uh, his, he, his wife, and his son all have some medical concerns uh, that are going on. Uh, continue to remember Ronnie Lindley, Mike Krause, Matt Dodson, and Reese Needham. Are there other prayer concerns or praises that you want to bring before God this morning and for the church family? Bill and Betty, it's good to see you here today. We praise God for, for your presence. there are no others, let's stand and we will go to God in prayer this morning. God, we just want to take this time to say thank you. Thank you for the week behind us. Thank you for the week ahead of us. Thank you that your presence will go with us and that your presence has been with us. We pray for every single person here that today as we uh, just acknowledge the, the many blessings you've given us, that you would continue to grow us a, as your disciples, that as we uh, know you more, we would love you more, as we love you more, we would love our neighbors more, as we love our neighbors more, we would see the world uh, just grow in such a movement of love. We, uh, we look at our world and the brokenness and the fractured nature of it, and uh, we realize that you your intention is not for it for it to continue being divided, but that everyone should be drawn together under, under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So God, I pray for every person here that you would continue to draw our hearts in trust and obedience to you, that, that we would live for your glory and for your praise. Help us, Lord, to be faithful. Help this time that we have together for worship to honor you, uh, that, that we would know you more and love you. Lord, we also want to take this time to pray over these concerns uh, that we have in our community and in our and with our coworkers, we pray for Buddy Michaels and his wife and his son and the different circumstances that they are facing right now. Each one having their own health concerns. Give their body strength. Give their doctors wisdom. Lord, help them uh, as they navigate this difficult season and remind them that you are present to them. Lord, we lift up Ronnie and the the health concerns that he is facing. Give him strength and comfort in these moments. Father, for Mike Krause and his family as he is. Uh, continuing to go through uh, the, the treatments that he's facing and the, just the impact that it's having on his body. I pray that you would give him just an overwhelming peace that only your spirit's presence can give. Lord, for Matt Dodson, watch over him and what he is going through in this time. And for Reese, we, we lift him up as well. Lord, we give you praise for, for Phil and Betty being here today. We give you praise for every person that's here today, that you have drawn them to be a part of this community on this morning because we recognize that you are worthy to be worshipped. And that's why we're here, Lord. We are here to worship you. We are here to lift up the name that is above every other name. Lord, that may, we may not get on our knees and bow, but Lord, may our hearts be bowed in your presence because you are the King of of all creation, and all praise is yours. Lord, continue to draw us closer to yourself. May we love you with everything that we have this morning and throughout this week ahead, us, uh, ahead of us. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all take our hymn books and join together as we sing, Come, you thankful people, come. It's on page 136, and it's also on the board.
we continue in worship today, I want to read uh, for, for us Psalm 100, a psalm of thanksgiving. Uh, the, the little headline there, it says, Forgiving Grateful Praise. And so I wanted to read it especially on this week as we celebrate Thanksgiving because uh, the, the person above all, it's not just saying thank you for the things in our lives or the people in our lives, but it's acknowledging uh, God's presence. So we want to take this time of worship, especially to give grateful praise back to God. So with that, let's read Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
as the choir is going down, we'll invite all, all of our children to come up and uh, go forward as they go back to the back to work on their children's program for Christmas. We're so excited about that and uh, what God is doing in them right now. And as they're dismissed, we want to invite you all to join together this morning for a period of open worship as we've talked about gratitude, and we just want to invite you to take this time, if, if God is leading you, to lift up a praise to him, to say thank you uh, at, during this time of worship.
to say thank you for this time together. And thank you for the song that the choir has, or the songs that the choir has led us in. The invitation to pray along with that last song, let my life praise you. God, I hope that that is on the hearts and the minds of every single person that is here today, that they want their life to praise you. And we acknowledge that we praise you when we submit and surrender ourselves to you, to your Holy Spirit's presence. When we are faithful to move when you tell us to move. When we speak when you tell us to speak. Lord, when we're silent, when you tell us to be silent, that is how we praise you. We are sensitive to your Spirit's presence. And God, that's just an invitation for us to realize that we need to know your Spirit's promptings. Help us to get a sense of who you are. That's a part of what we do here in worship as we get, grow to know your voice, as we know your voice here we, we listen carefully here so that when we're out in the world, when we're in our homes, when we're, when we're in our workplaces, when we're in uh, all the places that you have in creation, if we know your voice here, we can know your voice there. We can hear you speaking to us and telling us what to say. I pray, Lord, that you would make us faithful to listen, to listen and to know who you are in any moment so that we can offer the praise that you are worthy to receive. Lord, take this time today. Help to make each and every one of us faithful. Fill us with your Holy Spirit's presence that we would go and carry you throughout all creation, loving you with everything that we have. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. What's coming out of your life? What, what, is the, what are the things that you have coming out of your mouth, your actions, and your relationships? Because the reality is, is that there are things that are coming out of every single one of our lives. Your life is overflowing with something. There's something that's going on. There is a message that you are communicating every single morning and when you wake up and every day as you go throughout your day. Your life is communicating something. I want to ask you today, what is it? What does your life communicate? You know, maybe you would take a moment to pay attention to what are the topics that you're talking about every single day or every single week? What are the things in your life that consume your attention? Because the reality is, is that the things that we focus on and we pay attention to end up coming into our lives and overflowing. I love this picture of, of a glass. It makes me think about the 23rd Psalm when it says our, our cup overflows. And that's because we're in God's presence. It overflows with God's presence. And that's the reality. It, does, it doesn't necessarily hold true that uh, it's only God, but it's whatever we're focusing our lives on, our lives overflow with, that there is something that's pouring out. And our invitation today is to make sure that what is coming out is honoring to God. Because we want to worship Him and we want to praise Him. We want to see that, that the things coming out of our lives lift up the name of Jesus Christ. That's my hope and my desire for my life, but it's not just for me, it's for the church as a whole. We want to see the things flowing out of the lives of the people sitting in the church being the presence of God, that we've been in his presence, and so it just pours back out into our lives. And so as we look at the scripture for today, we're going to be in Luke chapter 17. If you want to go ahead and be turning there, we're looking at Jesus as he heals the ten men with leprosy. And how this one responds with gratitude. We want to pay attention to the response of gratitude because I think that gratitude, the thing that comes out of our heart, as we are grateful as disciples, as Christians, that should be the re response that we give. It's the only response that every single one, one of us should have is that of gratitude to praise God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Polly, for sharing that, that it is, it is a blessing that we can, if we have nothing else to thank God for in any given moment, we can thank him for the blood of Jesus, that we will not be eternally separated, but we are being drawn into a relationship now and forever with the God of all creation, and it is made possible through the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise God for that. We want to be a people who are responding to life in gratitude. And so I want to go ahead and read 
our, our scripture for today. I didn't read it earlier because I felt like this is one that didn't fit reading earlier, but we want to pay attention to the gratitude that is in the heart of this one leper out of ten. So with that, let's read Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19 today. It says, Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them came back, and when he, when he saw he was healed, came, one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Now there are some things that we need to, to know about this set of scriptures as we pay attention uh, to the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke is about the kingdom of God being present in the world and being available to every single person, that there is not a single person, there is not a single group of people that the Gospel of Jesus Christ is not attempting to reach. The kingdom of God is here. And so as these ten, these ten lepers are there, they, they realize something in Jesus. I don't know how they knew, but they knew something was different about Jesus. And so they called out to him, have mercy. They said, Master, have mercy. And at this point in the text, in, in the gospel according to Luke, uh, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem in the first part, the first section from uh, chapter 1 through 950. You, you see this, this ministry of Jesus starting to take shape, but there's something that actually transpires in Luke 951. Things shift, and Jesus becomes in, almost in a hurry. It says in 951 that he set his eyes towards Jerusalem. So from that point forward, Jesus starts to un, act uncharacteristic of what we think he would act because he is so focused on where he is heading. He is heading in a direction, and that is towards Jerusalem, and he knows what Jerusalem holds. And so I think that's one of the things that makes this section beautiful, that even though his eyes are set on Jerusalem, it doesn't mean he can't stop and pay attention to ten lepers. He still pays attention to the people around him. There are times when Jesus seems really harsh in this section, and, and even in the scripture, where, where Jesus calls out the other nine that are not faithful in their response to what had happened to him, to them. But Jesus still pays attention to these ten. He hears their cries and he responds in, in mercy to them. Another thing we need to pay attention to is that we are told in this section of Scripture two things about these men, these ten men. One, they're all lepers. We don't know what the, the nationality of every single one of them is, but we realize that it's along the border. And, and so these men, because they are excluded from the rest of society, they are lepers. They cannot take part in the rest of community because it is a highly contagious disease. If you were to come in contact with someone with leprosy, you would have to go and exclude yourself from the rest uh, of the community until you knew for sure that you didn't contract it because if, if you contract leprosy, it would be passed on to the people around you. And so that's why we see at first they maintain their distance. Those lepers would have walked around in, in society yelling out as they moved through society, unclean, unclean, and they would keep their distance because they wanted to keep that disease to themselves for the good of everybody else. And so it was very much a limiting thing that they were held uh, away from the rest of society. They were excluded. And so the only community they could find were other people who had the disease. And that was where they found their belonging. And so you see that and how it starts to play itself out. The fact that there is a Samaritan in the midst of them. I don't know what would have been worse for a Jewish person living in the first century having leprosy or being a Samaritan. 
They were, they, this, this man that we see in this scripture was doubly excluded because he was a Samaritan. The, the, the bad blood goes back hundreds of years at this point between Samaria and Israel. They were both from the same lineage. So the Samaritans are the ones that in the exile, they got left behind and they intermarried with other cultures and other races so much so that it, it diluted their faithfulness to God and their belief and understanding in, in what God had taught the people of Israel. And so this division, it just grew generation after generation. I think that's the irony of this scripture is that the person Jesus commends is the one that's the outsider, the one that's excluded, the one who, who has the, the, le the most distance to, to, to close in between him and God, and this is the person that Jesus affirms and sends out. So this man, as he is healed, he responds in gratitude. This comes in the middle of a whole section about giving the right response in faith. Earlier, we see in this very chapter where Jesus talks to his disciples about having faith as small as a mustard seed. If you have that faith as small as a mustard seed, you can speak to the tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. We are looking at a section where we are invited to respond faithfully. And so here, immediately after that section about responding faithfully, we see a man who is responding faithfully. He sees the person that's before him, and he wants to give praise to the one who had delivered him, who saw him in the middle of his circumstances. He wanted to respond faithfully, and that response was gratitude. Because this is the reality. When we respond with gra gratitude, it redefines who we are. Gratitude has the ability to shift our entire lives. It has the ability to shift everything that we're focusing on. When we choose to focus on gratitude, it, it can shift our whole day. It can shift our whole month. It can shift our whole lives when we choose to focus on gratitude. So we want to look today uh, about these things that are going on, how gratitude redefines us. When we choose gratitude, it redefines who we are. And it just made me think about life. Because this man, these men, they, they, choose, they have the same experience. They see Jesus, they call out to him. Some men only wanted to focus on the sign. But this one man, he wanted to focus on the Savior. He chose to focus instead on what was done for him. He chose to focus on the one that was able to give him that and so much more. So what happens when we respond in gratitude? Gratitude will help us trust in God's faithfulness. That's the first thing that we're going to see. The second thing we're going to see is that gratitude helps us experience who Jesus is. And the third thing is that gratitude makes our faith stand out to others. It makes us stand out to the people around us when we have gratitude. So with that, let's go through the scripture again and pay attention to what we see. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. So he's walking along this area between this, this dividing line between two groups of people who didn't like each other. He walks that line. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance. They were faithful doing what they needed to do. They didn't call out unclean. Instead, they called in a, out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And I love the fact that you see in that section these two ideas placed together Master, have pity. Master, have mercy. Those two words being, being squished together in the person of Jesus. They see who he is. He is the master. He is the Lord. He is the one that has authority over everything. And they cry out, mercy. Show mercy because it's the master that's able to show mercy. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests and as they went, they were cleansed. I love this miracle because it's not one of the miracles that, that Jesus spits in the mud and puts, it, puts the mud in the eyes of the, uh, of the blind man or uh, does, the, does the whole ear trick with the, not trick, but the miracle with the, uh, with the man that's, that's deaf. He, he so often shows these miracles, but simply in their act of faithfulness to go and show yourselves to the priest, he delivers them. It is a miracle that's taking place here. It wasn't that Jesus did these, uh, these, these mystical things. He simply says, go and show yourself. And they were cleansed because of their faithfulness and Jesus gives the word and so when we pay attention to that gratitude when we learn to have gratitude it helps us to trust in God's faithfulness that we can call out master have mercy 
we trust in God in one moment of our lives, it teaches us to trust in God in future moments of our lives. This, this moment is almost unremarkable. These men are yelling, and Jesus yells back at them, and it can almost be end of story, but they listen and they obey to what Jesus said. And so the whole group was healed. Not just one man. Ten men were healed in this miracle. The group, somehow they recognized something was different about Jesus, but we're going to focus on the one man because one man responds differently than the others. Makes me think about this. We're getting to close towards Christmas, and I've said it year after year, one of my least favorite things to do is buy Christmas presents, partially because going shopping for Christmas presents makes me feel like these two kids right here. So that's, that's how I want to respond to it. But, but I, I just love uh, these two pictures because they, I, I was searching for kids receiving Christmas presents and crying. Because kids, they start getting, they get Christmas presents. I, I love, especially the one there on your right. It, it was a cruel trick that these parents played on this child because this child is a diehard White Sox fan. Loves the White Sox. She's, she's six years old and loves the White Sox. And so this, what you're seeing here is the response to her parents giving her a Cubs hat. It would be like so many of you Carolina fans if I gave you a Duke hat, right? That, 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 would, be the, that would be the case, that she is so upset about it. I know in, in, in our family we have the, the, the story of a child that received a gift one time, and when they received the gift, they, they were like, I did not want this. How often do we get gifts, though, and, and we, we're not really grateful for them? We don't realize that there was time that was spent in the purchasing of the gift, that someone cared enough and I almost feel like the, these men, yes, they were blessed. They were blessed because they were healed. Jesus said go, they were healed, and, and they moved forward and they were set free to reintegrate back in with society because every single one of them was freed, but we see one that responds differently. Not, not that they were crying or upset, but they, that they, they see the gift in a different way. So we want to become more like this one man. Let's pay attention to what happens to this one man. Just a note on that last slide, I was thinking about it, 34 days till Christmas if you've got to do Christmas shopping. It's getting close, y'all. Black Friday is this Friday if you need to, to do that, if you want to, to venture out and dare that. Anyway, moving forward in the scripture, one of them, just one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. I love the fact that Luke makes sure we know this man was an outsider. He directly tells us he was a Samaritan. He was an outsider. He should not be the one coming to Jesus because Jesus was the Jewish Messiah. But we are seeing Luke say, no, 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 no. It's not just about the Jews. It's about anybody that would hear and believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that he truly is the kingdom of God being present in us. So we see this one man. And, and I love the fact that it's not saying, one, it says one of them, when he saw he was healed. It doesn't, tell, it doesn't give us the details of what happened at this point. It, it doesn't say, all right, he goes on to, to show himself before the priest. It doesn't say that he did all these other things. It just tells us when he saw he was healed. So it kind of gives me the idea was before he even had shown himself to the priest, he recognized he was healed and he came back. He came back and he praised God in a loud voice, literally a megaphone. His megaphone, he doesn't want to be quiet about what's happened to him. And he throws himself at Jesus' feet and he thanks him. His heart is full of gratitude because gratitude helps us experience who Jesus is. When we church, when we choose to be grateful, we experience more of who Jesus is, who God is. I, I wonder in this moment, how many steps had they walked? How far had they traveled to see the priest when they recognized? Was it the first step? Was it 100 steps? Was it a mile? Was it five miles? How far had they walked when they recognized, when this one man recognized that he had been healed? And the point that he says, I'm going back because I want to be with that guy. See, the others, they, they were so focused on being back in society, being accepted in the religious circles. And this one man says, it doesn't matter about that stuff because if Jesus is here and he's the one that's able to deliver, I want to be with him. He's the one I want. 
I want his presence. I want to, to experience who he is more and more. And so this gratitude in his heart draws him back to Jesus, not to society. Gratitude, it, it, when we practice gratitude, it brings us back to God time after time after time. And he recognized that something greater than the temple and the religious structure is here. And so he goes back to Jesus. Church, I want to challenge you. What are you looking to, to make your life better? Uh, good. What are you thinking is going to make you grateful if you're looking for something other than God? You're always going to be disappointed. You're always going to be discouraged. You're always going to end up in a place of despair because everything that we try to build our lives on that is not of God is going away at some point. It's going to disappear. But when we hold to Jesus, we are filled with gratitude. And I love the fact that that, that that word there when it says he gives thanks, it's the same word that, that's used later on for communion. When Jesus gives thanks in, in, the, in the meal of, of communion, as it's often called, it's the same word that he sees who Jesus is and he understands the presence that is there with him. Church, when we practice gratitude, when we say thank you to God, it's one of the most intimate things that any of us can ever do with God. Just to say thank you. It makes me think about Deuteronomy 11, 22. It says, if you carefully obey these commands I am giving you to follow, to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, and to hold fast to him. This is what gratitude does. When we pay attention to what God wants to do in our lives, he draws us closer to him that we hold fast to him. We love him. We obey him. And so I thought about the, the poem by Elizabeth Barrett Browning called Aurora Lee, and just a, a particular quote from it. This quote, it says, Earth's crammed with heaven. I love that image. Because so often we think of heaven being out there and far away, and she, she changes the whole perspective and says, Earth is crammed with heaven. Every single where we look, Earth is crammed with heaven. In every common bush, a fire with God. But only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit around and pluck blackberries. That, that poem there in this particular section is a famous section of the poem. We see just the image of, of Moses taking off his shoes when he comes to the burning bush. And we are invited, church, with gratitude to come before God and see that every single moment God has something that he's doing. But it, makes, it draws our attention to only he who sees taking off his shoes. Only he who sees. Are we a people who are seeing? Are we a people who, who are coming before God in worship and in gratitude? Or are we being the rest that sit around and pluck blackberries? Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The third thing we see is that gratitude makes our faith stand out to others. The other nine, they, they did exactly what Jesus told to do. And I struggled with this, th this particular story because you, you see that. The, the other nine, they did exactly what Jesus said to do. Go show yourself to the priest. This one man, he, he chooses to do something a little extra. He chooses to do his own riff on things, but he comes back to Jesus. That is the point. He recognizes the one who has given him such a great gift. He chooses to express gratitude, and I think the power of that is to realize that 20 centuries later, we have this man's legacy captured here. That the gratitude in his heart is celebrated, that we today are, are remembering what he did 2,000 years ago. Gratitude makes our faith, our trust in who Jesus is stand out uh, in the world around us and the people around us. Think for a moment. Which of these ten lepers received the greatest reward? Every single one of them was healed. I believe Jesus said, go and show yourselves. And so all of them were healed on the way. Which of the ten received the greatest blessing? The one that came back. Because he didn't just get the gift. He got the giver of the gift. He got to be in the presence of the one that was able to say the word and that everything comes into creation. He saw that this was God in the flesh. He saw that the kingdom of God had broken into this community and so he gets the greater blessing because he chooses to be grateful. He was redefining what mattered in this life. 
Every person has access to the grace of God, but most will pass it by. Think for a moment. How many of you like to be around people who are grumpy? Not many people, right? I was like, all right, peace out. I'm heading somewhere else. I got other places I can be. I would rather be with people who are grateful. I would rather be uh, find, find places to be where, where, where people are excited about what God is doing. And so we just want to pay attention, church. Pay attention to the gratitude in our hearts that we would be a people who recognize God's presence, that we are being grateful. We are being grateful. We're seeing how God is at work, how he is still speaking. He is still telling us to do things in his name. And we're listening to his voice, and we want to pay attention and do those things that he has said. And, and I love the fact, you go to the end of this, he's, Jesus says to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Literally, it's the word we get salvation from. Your faith has saved you. When we choose gratitude, our faith saves us. It sets us free from the power of sin. It sets us free to become who God has made us to be, and it makes us stand out from the people around us. When we focus on what God is doing, I believe we become more and more grateful, and we stand out like a sore thumb in the community and in the world. So I want to leave you with this last quote. I love this quote from Meister Eckhart. It's been one of the ones that I've come back to over and over again where he said this, if the only prayer... You say in your entire life is thank you. It will be enough. It will be enough that we as Christians, as Jesus' disciples, we are being invited to say thank you. Think about the things we're thanking him for because it really is enough that he loves us, that he cares for us. He sees us in our, in our times of need and he longs to be with us. Thank you is enough. It sets us apart. It redefines who we are. It, it lets the world see that we're not like everybody else. And because it's, it's okay to stand out in a world that's dying and perishing apart from God. It's okay to stand out and not follow the rest of society, especially when the goal of our lives, thanking Jesus, is to bring glory to God. And I love the fact... I love the fact that we see in this scripture that this man's gratitude, it brings him back to Jesus' feet. Where else would you want to be? Where else matters to be except at Jesus' feet? I think, I think when we say thank you in our prayers, when we find reasons to thank God, it brings us to his feet every single time in worship and in praise. So I just want to challenge you as you go from this place. Continue to focus on the things that you're grateful for. It, it will change your day, and I believe ultimately it will change your life when you focus more and more on gratitude. So I want to invite you to stand as we close in prayer this morning. God, I pray over your people today. I pray, pray over them the blessing of your presence. I pray over them that they may hear your voice and what you have to say to them, that they are loved, that they are cared for, that they matter, that you died to save them from their sins and set them free from the power of sin, and you have called them and equipped them to walk in this world in your Spirit's presence, to be a blessing to the world, that the world may know who you are. And Lord, I believe that gratitude is going to be one of those keys to experiencing that. God, I pray for your people if, we're, if we get focused on the negative things, and it's so easy to get caught up in negativity, God, I pray that you would just set us free from those things and focus us on you. That in your presence we might fall at your feet in gratitude, and we might love you with everything we have. We might depart from this place and bring glory to the name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that you our Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord, and draw us closer and closer to your presence and to your spirit this week that you might be glorified in our lives. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.